Welcome to a Legendarium special about Didius Julianus, the man who bought the Roman Empire. Marcus Didius Julianus was born on January 30th, 133 AD, to Quintus Petronius Severus and his wife Amelia Clara, both residents of Mediolanum, now called Milan. However, Julianus came of age in the house of Emperor Marcus Aurelius's mother, Domitia Lucilla. He enjoyed her support as well as that of her son, Marcus Aurelius, throughout his early career. And as such, Didius Julianus rose steadily through the ranks of the Honorium Cursus. He reached the post of Castor a year before the legally required age, for such legalities would often be overlooked for members of the imperial court. After a term as aedile and praetor, Marcus Aurelius appointed Julianus to the command of the 22nd Legion in Germania. He then served as governor of Belgica, where he defended the province from the incursions of a Germanic tribe called the Chausi. This command earned him promotion to the consulship, and he went on to govern Dalmatia and Germania Superior. He then served as Praefectus Ameliatorum in Italy, responsible for grants of money and welfare to the poor. In these offices, Julianus won admiration for his plain lifestyle, often dining on beans and cabbage, and once made a suckling pig last for three days, despite his considerable wealth. Relatively little is known of Julianus' personal life, save that he married and sired a daughter. Unfortunately, Julianus' career briefly stalled when Emperor Commodus, the son of Marcus Aurelius, recalled him and several other commanders to Rome. Commodus then forced Julianus to temporarily retire from public life. Although no proof exists, it is believed that Julianus may have been part of a conspiracy that sought to retire Emperor Commodus from politics and life. However, this suspicion seems to have been short-lived, for he quickly returned to imperial favor and the governorship of Bithynia. During the year 193 AD, when Didius turned 60 years old, the year of the four emperors began with the murder of Emperor Commodus. The Praetorian Guard then installed a man named Pertinax into the Imperial Purple. During the reign of Pertinax, Didius Julianus became a senator and a co-consul. However, as emperor, Pertinax embarked on an aggressive series of reforms, including curbing the power and wealth of the Praetorian Guard, who had, of course, brought him to power. The Praetorian Guard expressed their unhappiness with these reforms by murdering Pertinax on March 28, 193 AD. They then did something shocking and unprecedented, even by the scandalous standards of the Roman Empire. The Praetorian Guard put the Imperial Purple the city of Rome, and the empire up for auction. Heavily armored guardsmen shouted an announcement from the city walls concerning the rules for prospective bidders. Most of the prospective candidates for the imperial purple locked themselves in their houses, fearing civil war. Only a few came out for the greatest auction ever. Backed by a group of senators who had Milanese connections, Julianus competed for the big prize with the late emperor's father-in-law, Titus Flavius Sulpicianus. During the bidding war, Julianus benefited from the Praetorians' fear that a kinsman of the murdered Pertinax might take revenge upon them if raised to the imperial purple. In this way, Julianus won the bidding, and the Praetorian guard escorted him to the Senate. There, Didius Julianus met with angry demonstrators who denounced the auction and called for the army to stop this travesty. Razor-tongued rumors soon reduced Julianus's once good reputation to shreds. Men whispered that he connived in the murder of Pertinax and even celebrated his death with an extravagant banquet in which oysters and fatted birds and fish were offered up to the guests. 
course, that would only be the beginning of Julianus' problems, for he promised 25,000 sesterces to every man in the Praetorian Guard, a total of 200 million sesterces. This extraordinary promise won him the loyalty of the Guard for now, and they encouraged the Senate to support him at Spear Point. However, whenever Julianus appeared in public, an angry crowd gathered to boo him and hurl stones at him. This lack of popularity so troubled Julianus that he supposedly formed a clique of magicians and had them cast spells to make people like him. If that is true, the spells did not work. When Didius Julianus appeared for chariot races at the Circus Maximus, the crowd shouted the name of Pacinius Niger, a Syrian commander who declared himself emperor. Supposedly, Julianus sent a centurion with secret orders to meet with Niger and then murder him. However, he would have been wiser to worry about Septimius Severus, commander of the Danube legions. Julianus sent officers to arrest Septimius Severus after he declared himself emperor, an unwise move since Severus already marched south at the head of his legions. Upon seeing Severus's army, the officials quickly defected to the invader. Unable to raise any armies of his own, Julianus offered to make Severus his co-emperor. Severus duly ignored the offer and simply continued his march. In a desperate attempt, Julianus then executed the former Praetorian prefect Latus and Commodus's old mistress Marcia. Both had been deeply involved in Commodus's murder, and since Commodus remained popular with the Roman army, Julianus hoped this would appease Severus and his legions. It did not. Severus simply seized the fleet at Ravenna with little opposition and continued his march. Julianus, despite his wealth, could not pay the Praetorians the promised 200 million sesterces. Severus, in turn, sent word to the Praetorian Guard that he would not harm them if they kept peace. In this way, the Praetorian Guard switched sides and Didius Julianus found himself completely alone. Before Severus arrived in the city, the Senate sentenced Julianus to death, named Severus their emperor, and declared Pertinax a god. Overwhelmed and resigned to his fate, Deus Julianus simply waited in the imperial palace for Severus to arrive completely alone. He died at the age of 60, having reigned for 67 days. Supposedly, his last words before being killed by a common soldier were, But what evil have I done? Whom have I killed? His body went to his wife, Manlia Scantilia, who laid the late emperor to rest in the tomb of his great-grandfather. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.